how do you build a 200 or a 300 amp hour battery with a JK BMS into a standard replacement size. Hi folks, I'm Roger from Off Grid Van Life and in this episode we are going to be building out this 280 amp hour battery with a JK Smart BMS with active balancing uh, to fit into a standard battery replacement size. So this is maybe a bit bigger than, a bit taller than some of the lead acid batteries that you get, um, but generally it's about the same size. So the the uh, the width and the length is fairly standard and it's not that much higher. You get some lead acids that are actually taller than this, but yeah, it's a, it's a nice size that fits into uh, most places that you know, used to have lead acids and uh, we're going to build this into it. So. Let's get on with it. So we start off by clamping the cells. So we've made these little jig things uh, just using some thread bar and some pieces of wood. And that basically enables us to clamp the cells a little bit. Now we don't go overboard to the point where it's distorting the uh, housings or the casings of the cells, but it's basically just to pull them together nicely so that when you apply your fiber tape like this, uh, it gives a good compression onto the cells. Obviously this fiber tape uh, should not uh, stretch like other tapes so like insulation tape or duct tape or something like that and so when you clamp it uh, like we've done here and then apply the fiber tape then it should hold them pretty well and clamp them quite nicely so we go usually about three turns uh, on each level and then we put a couple of uh, small uh, thinner uh, pieces of tape on the bottom and the top once we've removed the clamps so a pretty straightforward and easy method I forgot to mention we have two pieces of ply on either side that we paint so it's just like six mil ply uh, and it's enough to hold the cells give a bit of structure to the ends to stop the cells from swelling we often when we put these uh, batteries into a case like this we just tape the bms onto the end uh, because in any case we put a bit of foam or something just to pad the battery a little bit to stop the cells and everything inside from moving around uh, and so it tends to hold the bms pretty securely in there next we need to make up the black wires which will connect the bms to the battery and then the BMS to the terminal on the case lid. So I was just measuring out the wires to make sure that I got them the right length. Uh, we only had a little bit of this wire in stock so I wanted to make sure that I got it right because I didn't have much to play with <laughs> if I got it wrong. Uh, so yeah, pretty straightforward. Just uh, terminated them with the lugs, put some heat shrink on there. I like to use the heat shrink that has the adhesive and uh, use the heat gun. I uh, made four of them up so then I could then put them onto the BMS, initially just tighten them by hand just to get them in place, then uh, use our torque wrench with a uh, uh, Phillips head bit on the end to torque it to seven newton meters on all four of them or so both sides. Uh, we then measured all of the balance leads and cut them to length so some people argue that you shouldn't cut balance leads because it can affect the performance. Uh, in reality because they're not under load there's no voltage drop on the balance leads and they're moving such small currents when you have an active balancer like this JK BMS that I don't think it really makes a difference. It works quite well to have two people obviously we could move pretty quickly I was cutting the balance leads while my dad was terminating them and uh, yeah worked pretty well got it done pretty quickly terminated all of the balance leads so the JK BMS is slightly different to the DALI BMS in that you actually need to so for a 4 race battery you connect five red wires and one black wire so uh, the BMS this BMS is quite versatile in that you can set it to be either 4 s or 8 s and so I guess it just uses the ninth red wire to determine whether it is a 4 s or an 8 s battery uh, and you also obviously configure that in the settings um, but it's quite quite interesting and uh, that's one of the things we missed we didn't read the instructions when we first used a JKBMS and it's a good point to note that uh, you got to connect uh, 
five red wires for a 4S battery. So just went through, we tend to use an impact driver just on this lower setting just to do the initial tightening. Um, it's basically the same as just tightening it by hand. Uh, we just don't torque it that much using the impact driver and we torque it properly with the torque wrench later on. Uh, this is the easiest method of getting these batteries into the case that we've found. So lay them on their side and slide them up like that. We've tried various methods of dropping them in and it is possible but this is the risk risky riskless way I then drilled a hole in the lid to put the on off switch for the BMS uh, the switch is about 11.5 millimeters so I used a 12 millimeter bit, bit and uh, drilled that hole I didn't connect that plug yet uh, I wanted to get everything connected all of the the red and and black wire for the positive and negative terminals on the lid and make sure everything was connected before I uh, plugged put that plug that switch into the BMS I uh, then just did a dry fit to see uh, if everything worked we then uh, connected the red wire that would be cutting across the top of the battery okay just before we close this all up there's the JK neatly in there balance leads coming out connected to all of the terminals got this red wire here which is going to go on the back of the case drilled a hole through for the switch Need to plug that switch in which we'll do in a second uh, but yeah overall pretty pleased with how that's looking and then finally connected the red wire onto the red terminal on the case lid and uh, that was it basically we put this uh, little bit of conduit onto that red wire because it cuts over some of the terminals and uh, it's just an extra insulation uh, to make sure that the bus bars and the terminals don't cut through that red wire and create a short Then put the lid on and this is pretty much good to go it just needs to be glued or stuck down with some stickers or tape and that's us ready okay i've heard this one beep now and the <clears throat> so the initial setup we need to do all of that so settings we've got uh, we have to verify the password which is I think it is one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so now we can change this to four. And um, the battery capacity is 280. Uh, that the balance trigger voltage is good. The calibrating voltage is good. The Yeah, all of that is good. Okay, well this battery is ready to uh, put onto a charge. So folks, we've finished um, constructing the battery. Uh, we haven't torqued down the uh, terminals or anything yet because we just want to put this on charge. So just waffling away here, one of my concerns is that we haven't charged these cells up so they're not at their most expanded state. So we've put the bus bars on very lightly. Um, we're going to charge these up, not too fast to charge, charge them up and then we're going to uh, release the to one side of the terminals just so that any expansion they, they can uh, you know, move out without putting structural stress on the uh, bus bars of the terminals there and uh, then torque them down properly. Uh, and at the same time, we want to just see uh, how hot this is going to get inside here. And then we will run a discharge test. So we'll put a two kilowatt inverter on here uh, with a fan heater run that for an hour or so and just see how hot this gets inside here. Um, we want to see realistically, the dailies are pretty good in terms of heat generation. Uh, we want to see how good this is in terms of heat generation. Will it get too hot inside there? And there are two uh, temperature probes that we've put the one on the bottom of the BMS, one on the cells, and the other one is the, uh, the, the MOS itself has a temperature sensor, so we will monitor the temperature of all three. So. Thanks for watching this and uh, stick with us for the next episode where we do some serious stress tests on this battery.